Hello, my name is Yang Li. I'm the AP teacher here. And today we're starting on the lesson of 3.2. This is about the derivative as a function. Remember in 3.1, we did this. We did a, a derivative as a function at a point, right? Remember that? Remember we learned this one here. We learned derivative of a function at A equals the limit x approach to a fx minus fa over x minus a, right? That's the time we have this derivative of a function at a point of x equals a there. But now we're talking about imagine if the function is derivative in within this domain in, in a certain intervals, what happens is that we're going to have what? We're going to define, we're going to define the what? Uh, F derivative of the X. And this is one form of the derivative in the 3.1 lesson. And there was another one we call it what, F derivative of the A. We can get a what? Limits H approach to zero. F A plus H minus F A divided by H, right? This is two form of the definition of derivative of the function at X equals A. But right now, if you imagine if the A keeps changing within the derivative interval of the function, so we can get about this kind of format, you see? Derivative of the x, a change the x. So it's x plus h minus fx over h. Okay. So that's the way we define this here. Let the f be a function. The derivative of the function denoted by this f prime, right? Derived by f prime here. So you can get. You got that as f prime here, so you got this function here. Okay. This be careful that derivative function also the function, right? Also, that's another function. Okay. That's what they said. The function is that differentiable at a. That means f derivative is exist. But if the function is differentiable at within a certain interval, like domain, so that means what we call that function is derivative function differentiable function, okay? Now let's uh, use this example, 3.11 here, example to explain what's this new definition about. Actually, this is not new. This is uh, like original definition. They just expanded from one point to the interval. Sometimes it's a domain of the uh, derivative function, okay? Find the derivative of the square root of the function, this one, right? <clears throat> so what are we gonna do? Let me show you here, they have this kind of example here. You see, we still follow the formula, right? Derivative, we follow that one. So you have a F with derivative of the X. Let's just introduce in this lesson. That will be limits H approach to zero. F X plus H minus F X divided by H, right? But be careful here for this question, this example, fx equals to square root of x. So you should f x plus h should be square root of x plus h because you substitute this one to here. And fx, of course, is square root of x and divided by h limits like this, right? But be careful that as you approach zero, if you directly put a zero here, put a zero here, square root of x or minus square root of x will be zero. H is zero, zero over zero, that's not defined. So at this case, we, we need depends on the algebra work, okay? What we're gonna do is we time this one by the conjugate of the numerator, all right? Why we're doing that? Because this is like a minus b, a plus b. 
equals a squared. Let me just expand this part for you. Okay, so make sure you understand. So this one will be equal to square root x plus h squared minus square root x squared over the bottom one is the h time by square root x plus h plus square root x like this. Huh? Now, be careful here. When you have this one, this top part here, this one, square root and square, they cancel each other, right? So this part you can get x plus h a minus square root of x and square cancel because square root and square, they're inverse function each other. So they cancel each other. So you got an x here. And over, this is the h and the square root x plus h and the plus square root of x like this. Now, at this moment, we can simplify. We can cancel this x with this x. So you have h here alone and divided by edge, cancel each other. This is the one, right? So that's why they got this here. And then the things is easier because you can plug in edge equals zero in. Edge, when edge you plug in, right? so you're gonna have what? One over, this is zero, Never mind. So you have square root x plus square root x. Is so one of the square x plus one of the square x equals two of the square x like this. So the final answer will be one over two square x. All right. So now we can go to <clears throat> the other one now. Okay. So this is the way I explain to you how do they get this uh, derivative here. Now let's move on here. So when we have this one, we go to example 3.12. Same thing, eh? they use the same idea, find the derivative of the quadratic function. You have quadratic function here. So you still follow the same idea, right? I just write it down one more time, okay? So the derivative from this lesson we know equals what? Limits. Right, h approaches zero f x plus h minus f x divided by h like this. And that, because the function is this, and then you have x plus h, so this one substituted by h, x plus h. So that's why this one will be equal to this one minus this one. See, everywhere when you see the x, you plug in x plus h x plus h. So that means this part is f x plus h. And the minus f x, just copy this one to here, okay? Over h like this, right? And then you break it down. This one uh, is not that hard, but you gotta be what? You gotta be, be careful with uh, for your methods, okay? So you for your like this one here, you will get this one, fast way is this, use this formula. First one squared, you got this one. And the second squared, you got this one. And then the, the two terms time together and double, you got this one. Of course, you can go by x plus h, time by x plus h and use the for you. You still get the same thing on this one, okay? The common error here is, see here, you got this one times this one, x squared, right? This one times this one, plus hx. This one times this one, plus hx. This one times this one, plus h squared. And then this is x squared, plus two hx, and the plus h squared. That's this one, right? Now here, this one here, you need to what? Suit it. Watch out, huh? common error from here. This is negative. So that's why you have a negative x squared minus 2h, okay? Be careful here. This one, this one is a negative x squared. This negative and negative will be positive. After that, you can cancel the common terms there. This one, like terms, x squared, x squared cancel, right? 
And then um, negative 2x, positive 2x cancel. So you have a 2xh minus 2h and a plus h square here. You see, up to here, you still cannot plug in h in. Eh? So that's why they have to factor the h out from here, factor the h out. So you're going to have 2x minus 2 plus h. Now you can cancel the h first because they cancel the zeros. And then you plug in, so you can get what? You can get this one equals to, you see here, 2x. All right? So that's the way we do this one. Now, uh, every time when they show you a couple of the examples, they would like to what? To show you something, uh, ask you to practice, okay? So when you do the practice here, we still use the same idea. Um, it's better before you continue to watch this much video, you can do it by yourself, by hand, practice, okay? And then continue to watch this video. Let me show you here right now, okay? So we're gonna find F derivative of X, right? We follow the formula, H approach to zero, F X plus H minus F X divided by H, like this, right? And then here, this one, x plus h. So plug in for the x. So you're going to have limits h approach zero. And uh, you have parenthesis x plus h squared. And a minus fx just x squared divided by h, right? And I'm going to continue. So we have still have limits h approach to zero. This one, you can break it down, okay? As well, I showed you how to break it down before. You have the same methods. Either use the formula or use um, um, for your methods. So you can get a x squared plus 2hx and a plus h squared and a minus x squared divided by h, okay? Now, here we can quickly cancel this one with this one. Right, and then we can factor the edge out. So we will have edge out, and then we're going to have what? 2x plus h over h, and this is the limit, h approach zero. And the edge is cancel. And then finally, when the edge approaches zero, this is zero, you're going to have 2x. So that's the way we can find this. Of course, at this moment, we still not use the formulas. We still use the basic definition of derivatives to find the derivatives of the fx. But later on, we're gonna introduce the formulas and make the derivatives much easier, okay? So uh, if you have any questions, you may like uh, email me and I can help you with all your questions, all right? Thank you. Bye-bye.